What's up guys, Justin here with thesketchupessentials.com and today's video I'm going to teach you 10 tips that are going to make creating plans and layout from your SketchUp models easier. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this video is kind of to highlight some of the tips, but definitely not all of them that I cover in the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course. And really the reason that I'm making this right now is because um, one of the things that I've just added is with the SketchUp Essentials course, I've now added access to the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course as well. Meaning that not only do you get the start to finish instruction that comes with the SketchUp Essentials course, at least for right now, I haven't decided how long this is gonna last yet. At least for right now, if you buy membership to the course, you also get access to my entire SketchUp Essentials for Architecture course, where we really dive deep on creating plans and details and like documents from your models. So if you want to check that out, you can do it at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. But what I wanted to do is just show you some tips that are going to make your life a little bit easier when it comes to creating plans in layout. And so this is a 3D warehouse model that I've downloaded. Um, and I'm not sure if I'm going to say that right or not, but it's the Model Circier, Circier 70. Um, and it's by SD. So if you want to download that from the 3D warehouse and follow along, you definitely can. And so remember that usually what we're doing inside of SketchUp in order to get things ready for layout is we're setting up views and other things like that, right? So this is my 3D model, but what I've done is I've created a couple different scenes, right? I've taken a section plane across this model like this and turned on parallel projection so that I have a straight up and down view. I've also got some other views in here. I thought this kind of isometric with the section cut was cool as well as my overall view. So my first tip is before you ever get into layout, label your scenes. We're gonna call this one floor plan. We'll call this one ISO section. And we'll call this one working view. Okay, and so the reason that you wanna label your scenes and in SketchUp 2023, you can just right click on this in order to rename it, is when you send this over into layout, this is going to bring those scenes with it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this model and I'm just gonna click on the option for send to layout. What that's gonna do is that's gonna pop up layout and it's gonna insert a viewport in whatever um, scene or um, in whatever document I create. So I'm just gonna pick a template. In this case, we're gonna go with a architectural D landscape right here. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna bring this over into layout from SketchUp. And what this has done is this has created a viewport. And so when I set up these views, if I right click on this, notice how if I go down to scenes, this is going to give me the option to select any of the scenes that were in my SketchUp model. That's how we set up our views for our viewport. Well, if you label these, it's a lot easier than just having a bunch of these that are labeled scene one, scene two, scene three. So tip one, label your scenes inside of SketchUp. Okay, so tip two is when you're working with layers in layout. It's a little bit different than the tags in SketchUp. Um, and the reason why is because there's a couple different options in here. And specifically, what we've got is we've got some options in here for repeating things across different pages. So if I click on these elements, notice how these turn red. These or this one right here for the sheet description turns blue. The reason why is because these are on different layers. So if I right click on this element and um, I click on the option for move to layer, note how this is on a layer labeled on every inside page. Well, what that means is that means that everything on that layer, um, which is right here, is going to be repeated across every page. So if I look at this, you can see that um, because there's multiple different sheets over here and you can toggle that on and off by clicking on it. And so if I wanted to toggle this stuff to repeat on every page, I can just click on this right here. But now if I create a second page, notice how everything that's on the layer for on every inside page is going to be repeated. So let's say that we were to drag something in from a scrapbook, which we'll talk about in a second. If I was to take that object and I was to right click on it and move it to the on every inside page, notice what that's gonna do is that's going to repeat this element across every page. So this is especially helpful for things like your title block right here. Okay, so tip three is to use auto text. So you can find auto text by going to file, document setup, 
right here and clicking on the option for auto text. And notice what that does is that allows you to basically set tags that have a variable or a piece of data associated with it. So notice how this object right here, this issue date has a month, a date and a year. But if I double click on this, notice how it doesn't have the issue date typed in here. It has this named value. So what that means is that means instead of me updating this manually, um, I can actually come in my name values and adjust this. So if I click on my issue date, for example, I could type in 05 dash zero one dash 20 23 well what that's going to do is that's going to go through and that's going to replace your named value anywhere where that occurs and all you have to do in order to get this to show up is let's say i was to add text right here is just put the name in brackets so in this case i can type in issue date inside of these brackets and click off of here and notice how instead of it having the text issue date it's going to have that variable in here instead and then I could come in here and I could type additional text, whatever, but notice how that variable or that auto text is always going to populate. So you can also create your own auto text by just clicking on the plus button. So I'm going to do a custom text. I'm going to tag this one as just test tag. And then I'm going to type in my text, which is test text. So. Now, if I was to come in here and type in test tag, notice how it's going to populate this test text. So for things like project names, this can be extremely valuable. Okay, so next up is a tip that can be extremely valuable if you're resizing your viewport on your page. So notice how right now, if I click and drag this from the corner, it's actually resizing my image. Well, that's a problem inside of layout because I want this to be to scale, right? And if I click and drag this, this is actually changing the scale of my uh, viewport. And so if I was to go into the SketchUp model settings, you can see what the current scale is right here. And so let's say that I was to set this scale to like three and three eighths of an inch equals one foot like this, right? And so I've got this to scale, but notice how when I click and drag like this, it actually resizes my model and you lose your scale, um, which is definitely an issue if you're creating scale drawings. However, there's an option in here which allows you to resize the viewport without changing the scale called preserve scale. So I'm gonna set my scale back to three eighths of an inch equals one foot. Well, notice how now this doesn't fit in here anymore. Well, what I can do is I can check the box for preserve scale. And then if I click and drag this, it's going to resize the viewport box without actually resizing or changing the model itself. So now my scale is the same. So if you're gonna be moving or resizing your model, checking the preserve scale box could be really important. Okay, so next up is something that can be extremely frustrating if you don't do it right. So if you look at this model right now, I've got this in here and I probably wanna start doing some things in here like dimensioning and other things like that. Well, if you've ever gotten dimension set up and everything like that, and then you accidentally pick up this model and move it around, it can be extremely frustrating because it can mess up the alignment and everything like that, right? Um, so you might accidentally pick this up and move it like this far and then everything in your page is now off. Um, but in order to avoid this, what you can do is you can put this on a layer and then you can lock it. So I always say when you're creating something like this, and layer management is actually really important in layout. We talk about that a lot more in the course, but I always say once you get this in here and you have it placed, call it something like SketchUp Viewport, and then right click on the object and put it on that layer. So I'm gonna click on Move to Layer. We're gonna click on SketchUp Viewport, but then there's a button over here that's a little lock. As soon as you click on the lock, what that does is that locks any elements that are on the layer so you can't move them around anymore. So get your viewport set and then lock it so that you don't accidentally misalign everything. Okay, so next up, if you look at this model right here, you might notice that your lines don't look very good, right? And so the reason your lines don't look very good is because of the rendering style that we have selected. Now we get more in depth on this inside of the course, but there's basically three different rendering styles that you can select from in your SketchUp model viewport right here. And they basically affect how your model is going to be displayed. So right now we're set to raster rendering style. 
raster is really good for showing like, uh, it, it's really good for showing things like textures and colors and other things like that, but it's not very good for showing these straight lines. However, there's other options in here that are gonna do that better. Now, if I click on this, I can select the option for vector. And so when I do that, watch what happens to this toilet line right here. So if I click on vector and it's going to tell me that this can't represent complex styles, basically what that means is it shows lines really well, but it can't show things like textures very well. If I click on OK, notice how now these lines are super smooth, right? So if I change that rendering style to vector, I'm going to get much smoother lines and edges inside my SketchUp model. Now there is an option in here called hybrid, which is going to do both. Right, It's going to render your model so that it displays those texture styles, and it's also going to show your smooth lines. The only problem with that is if you have a large model, it can really affect your performance. So um, on sheets where you don't need that or sheets where you just want to show line work, you might just go like totally vector based. Um, so it kind of depends on what you're trying to do, but be aware that those different styles are in here and they can change the way your model looks. Okay, so my next tip is you're going to want to use scrapbooks when you're setting up your image like this in SketchUp. So the way that that works is a scrapbook is basically a preset element um, that's inside of layout. So what that means is that means it's something that's already been created and there's a bunch of them kind of built in that we're gonna take a look at um, real quick. Um, but there's a bunch of these that are already pre-created, well, what you can do is you can find things in these scrapbooks and drag them in. So let's say I wanted just the plain title block in here. Well, these are elements that are pre-built so that I can drag them over. And I can pick any of those elements that are in here. So if I wanted to add a note, for example, I could click and drag um, this object onto that note right here. Now we'll talk in a second about why that's not showing up, but you can basically use this in order to use those preset elements instead of you having to recreate them every single time. So we could come in here and we could just call this floor plan. We could type in here, your scale, other things like that. So set up your scrapbooks so that the things that you do over and over again, you're not repeating the effort every single time. Okay. So now let's talk just a little bit about why why that element that we brought in isn't showing up. So the reason for that is because your layers in layout stack on top of each other. So you can kind of think about each one of these layers as a piece of paper that you kind of pile together. So if you bring something in and you put it on this default layer right here, it's not going to show up um, because your SketchUp viewport is going to block it. So when I drag that scrapbook in here, it's being blocked by this image. Now, if I take that layer and I drag it up above something else, notice how now those are going to show up in here. So you wanna be careful that when you're taking objects like these and placing them in your viewport, that your layers are stacked in a way where you can see everything. Now, I usually recommend creating your own layer for things like notes. So I would want all of these notes to be on that notes layer. That way you can toggle it on and off and do some other stuff as well. Um, but the stacking of your layers is going to affect your visibility. So next, I highly recommend that you put things like dimensions on their own layer as well. So if I click on the plus button right here, I would create a layer called dimensions. Well, what I would do with that is all of my dimensions should be placed on that layer. So for example, I wanna create a dimension that's got the overall length of my house like this, maybe a dimension that shows my windows like this. Well, the problem with these dimensions right now is a couple things. First off, they're not very big, right? They're really difficult to see and I wanna change the size. Now you could come in here and click on every single one of these individually and start making that adjustment. I could go into my text style and make one of these bigger. I could also adjust the precision of my dimensions. But the problem with that is I'm only making a change to one of these. However, if you put all of your dimensions on one layer, what that does is that gives you the ability to right click and click on the option to select all of the entities on that layer. Well, as soon as you do that, you can come in here and you can adjust all of them at once. So I can set all of them to a precision of one eighth. I could set all of them so that they have a certain text size and I could also adjust the font of all of them at once 
as well. So what this does is this gives you the ability to control all of your dimensions and all of your styles at one time instead of having to go back through and make a bunch of those changes manually. Okay, and so this tip can be extremely helpful for creating elevation views from your SketchUp models for layout. Let's go ahead and let's create another page in layout. Well, what I wanna do is I wanna go back into SketchUp and I wanna create an elevation view of this kitchen right here. Well, the problem with that is at the moment, what I would have to do is I would have to add a section plane in here like this in order to split it off. So I would have to create this section plane right here, create another view um, with the other section plane in here. You can just end up with a lot of section planes, right? And so instead of doing that, what I wanna do is I wanna use the parallel projection. So what I wanna do is I wanna use the parallel projection and I wanna use the first person camera tool. So note that this is only going to work properly if you were in parallel projection camera mode, but what I wanna do, I wanna take this tool right here, the position camera tool, and I wanna set it up in this kitchen. If you don't see this large tool set, you can just right click in here and toggle on the large tool set. Whoops, that's not what I want. Um, so what I wanna do is I wanna activate this tool by clicking on it. And then what I wanna do is I wanna find a point and I wanna click and drag. And I wanna do it in a way where I'm dragging directly on this red axis so that I'm perpendicular to the surfaces I wanna see. Well, when I do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to take my camera view. And I'm gonna go ahead and toggle this action active cut off. And so what that's gonna do is that's gonna clip out everything that's behind my camera so I can get this quick elevation view. Well, then I can just add a scene I'm gonna go ahead and save that as a new style. And I'm gonna call this elevation one. I could go back to my floor plan and I could do the same thing over here. So click and drag along the green axis like this. And again, I want to toggle that section cut off, but I'm gonna add this as elevation two. And I'll add this as elevation three. And the cool thing about doing it that way is now I can jump back into those really easily just by clicking on them and I don't have to manage a bunch of section planes. So if I save this and then jump back into layout and I'm gonna go ahead and insert a new viewport on this page I'm gonna make sure that I put it on my viewport layer. And one thing you do need to do is you do need to make sure that you update your model reference. So I'm just gonna go into my document setup and just update this reference right here. But now if I right click on this and go into my scenes, notice how those elevations are gonna show up in here. And then from here, you could do things like clipping things out. So for example, and that's kind of a weird view, but what you could do is you could come in here and just draw a rectangle over this and you could use it as a clipping mask so that you only show that portion of your model right here. So that's just one of the things that you would learn inside of the SketchUp Essentials for Architecture, which you can currently get access to by purchasing the SketchUp Essentials course. I will link to that on this page. There's a lot more in there about creating plans and layout. Leave a comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this, and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.